All right, welcome back to Close Up. When she was elected to the Senate in 2010, Kelly Ayotte was viewed by many as the future of the Republican Party. That might still be the case, but the task at hand right now is to fend off a mighty challenge for a second term in an election year that really no one saw coming. Senator Ayotte is my next guest this morning. Good to see you, ma'am. Good to be with you, Josh. Yeah, so nine days to go. How are you feeling? Uh, feeling good. Just out there talking to people in New Hampshire, campaigning out there, bagging groceries at the Dunkin' Donuts, shaking all the hands, listening to people in New Hampshire. Yeah, you're staying away from the TVs because you are being carpet bombed on the airwaves. Uh, yeah, no, I'm being carpet bombed and, you know, from all these special interest allies of Governor Hassan, including Hillary Clinton's super PAC, Harry Reid's super PAC, Mike Bloomberg's super PAC, you know, because they know uh, they want her to be a rubber stamp for their agenda in Washington, and I'm going to stand up for the people of New Hampshire no matter what. Are people making the distinction? I mean, are they, are they asking you about it? Do they realize what an ad is that's put forth by a third party group? Yeah, versus? I'm not sure they do, and you know, that's one of the things, Josh, I offered Governor Hassan the People's Pledge in this race, which was the same pledge that was in place in the race between Elizabeth Warren and Scott Brown, kept that money out. Senator Shaheen offered that pledge in her race, and so we could have kept this money out. Um, I think that Governor Hassan clearly wanted all these uh, super PACs in, so I'm just going to get out and shake the hands of voters, because they're the ones that are going to decide this. We're talking about $100 million being spent on this race. Do you feel any pressure? Because both of the candidates on both sides have been criticized for being too careful with their answers, whether it's about Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton or whatever. Uh, everybody's just trying to walk that fine line without getting anyone too mad. Well, Josh, you know, I'm someone who's actually done 50 town halls um, in person, and I've done a number of also over the phone as well, so people can participate. So I'm not afraid to get out there and answer the questions of voters. And, you know, there's some big differences in this race. You think about uh, the taxes that Governor Hassan has pushed on our small businesses and families. So I'm going to let you keep more money in your pocket. National security, huge differences. Uh, she supported the dangerous Iran agreement. I'm against it. So these are the issues that we're talking about in health care. Boy, I'm hearing so much about higher deductibles, higher premiums, and co-payers out there on the trail. Yeah, the small businesses are talking a lot about that. But as far as the race goes, has there been an evolution to your campaign? I mean, I'm not going to ask you about Donald Trump and the things he says, but he did recognize an energy or an anger or whatever, a frustration out there. And did it take a while for other down-ballot campaigns, do you believe, to recognize that something different's going on here? Yeah, you know what? I think people are frustrated. They're frustrated with things like paying higher deductibles, co-pays, uh, this one-size-fits-all from Washington. Our small businesses and, and those that work for them working really hard, and you've got Washington pushing more regulations and making it more difficult. So I'm going to fight for people in New Hampshire. I want lower health care costs. I want to make sure that our businesses can create good-paying jobs. And by the way, the other thing, veterans, let's get the veterans the care that they've earned defending this nation. And you, obviously you feel like that some of these things haven't been talked about enough? Yeah, no, I think it's, it needs to be about the issues and because that's really what I hear about on the trail. That's what people in New Hampshire care about. You know, who's going to fight for them? And by the way, who's going to stand up for them no matter what? To both sides of the aisle and also have an ability to work with people to find common ground to get results. I mean, that's why I have one of the most bipartisan records in the Senate because I do focus on getting things done like the major heroin legislation we got done this summer. Are you finding it, though, that we talk about finding common ground within the Republican Party? There's a lot of different factions. I mean, it's the same thing it's on the, the other side, too. It's the same thing on the other side. With the Bernie Sanders folks, but maybe more. Uh, just, you know, I mean, since 2010, for, be it the Tea Party, but now you have the Trump folks. I mean, is are you explaining more than you should rather than describing what you plan to do? You know what I'm saying as far as your, your record? Yeah, well, as far as I look at, you know, this race, again, I think there are huge differences on taxes and spending. Governor Hassan, long history of increasing taxes on families in New Hampshire, not me. I'm going to fight. I always fight for more money in your pocket. Um, same thing with national security. You know I've developed that expertise on the Armed Services Committee, the wife of a combat veteran, and those issues are so important. Issues like Iran, where we differ. Um, you know, issues like looking at the health care law. These are the major issues in the race. Um, and you think about who's really going to fight against the status quo on these issues to solve these problems that I know people are frustrated about and that's really what this race comes down to all right so top of the ticket again you've said that you're not going to be voting for Donald Trump now and you don't support him uh, are you voting for Hillary Clinton 
no, I'm not voting for Hillary Clinton. And I think there's a big difference in this race because I will stand up to either side if it's not right for New Hampshire. I did that in my time in the Senate. I'll continue to do that. But I'll also be looking to find results uh, to work together so that we can continue to address our heroin epidemic, make sure better paying jobs, lower health care costs. That's what it has to be about. But, you know, Governor Hassan, I don't see her ever standing up to Hillary Clinton. I will. I'll also stand up to my own party when it's not right for New Hampshire. You know, one thing she pointed out a few moments ago is like one of the first things she would do as senator would be get some emergency appropriations to fight the, uh, the opioid ep epidemic. Why isn't there a greater recognition on the part of Congress to get this money? I mean, Ebola, we spent... I forget what the right. monopoly figure so is. So we actually, uh, you know, as we know, we passed the, the Comprehensive Addiction Recovery Act this summer. Um, Senator Shaheen and I have been working together for f to fight for four mo more money. I've supported the emergency appropriations, and uh, there's some seed money in that bill. I'm going to continue to fight for people in New Hampshire. But by the way, Josh, the money that went to, uh, that is already in place, that the legislature put to address our heroin epidemic, two-thirds of it at the state level has not gone out the door. And that's something I wanted to ask Governor Hatton about let's get those resources out into the community so that we can help people because that's we have to all be working together on this hey, but though when you're when you're down in Washington you're talking to a colleague Senate counterpart from Iowa or Montana or whatever yeah. do they get how serious of a problem well, I think this they're, is? they're getting it because we brought it to their attention and they're seeing in their own states and that's why we were able to pass major legislation this summer passed 92 to 2 in the Senate. That's why we did get some seed money uh, for this in the funding bill that only goes to November. And I'm going to be fighting to have this fully funded. This is something Senator Shaheen and I have been working together. We're going to do everything we can to make sure those resources are in our state to address prevention and education, treatment and recovery so that people can live quality lives. We can turn this around. If we, if voters see fit to give you a second term, Either way, for you, I mean, you're going to have a president there who you disagree with to a degree, whether it's Donald Trump or Hillary right. Clinton, where, I mean, with all the rancor that we've seen, I mean, people are just mad at each yeah, other. Yeah, no, so and, and Josh, I mean, I'm going to be that independent voice for New Hampshire. I'm going to stand up for the people of this state and this country. Um, but I'm also someone who's already demonstrated with my record that I can work with the other side to get things done. That's what we need in this country. We've got to solve problems. We've got to come together. You know, we've got 19 trillion dollars in debt we have to address that we have to create a better climate for good jobs in this country and we've got to keep our country safe in a dangerous world but are you gonna have to go the extra mile to, to get these things done and to, to get the con conversation going because we keep talking about the yeah. debt. we keep talking about health care well the I will go the extra election. mile you know I'll give it at all I have I'm gonna fight as hard as I can for the people of New Hampshire in this country and uh, this is the greatest country on earth, the greatest state in this country. And so there is nothing more important to me than getting up every day to fight with all my being to solve these problems. Well, Senator, best of luck to you moving forward. Nine days to go. Can you thanks, believe it? Thanks, Josh. I can't believe it. It's going quick. Yeah, it is. All right. Thanks, thanks. very much.